sports and the sport of wrestling saved my life that day. There's no doubt about it. Dale Frankie Jr. was attacked by an inmate while working as a correctional officer at Allenwood Federal Penitentiary. That attack cost him his right eye. I opened the door that morning, and it didn't matter if it was me or somebody else, but uh, they were getting attacked. Yep. I mean, he had a knife, a homemade sharpened weapon to shank, and uh, he attacked me from behind. We unlocked the cell doors, and we come back down the range to make sure everything's clear. Then we go downstairs in the office area, and we stand in the common area, and we say, clear. Well, when I come back down by, um, like three cell doors down, you can't really hear the doors open and the door open and all I heard was Ali Akbar and he, oh, and he hit me with the juggler and the juggler vein first. Did he? Then I spun around and wrist locked him and I had him for a while, but then my foot slipped on my own blood and he came down and got me in the eye. And he got me three times, he got me here too. Dale's wife, Angela, didn't realize at first how bad the attack was. And I was taken aback, but he's the one that called me. So I didn't think it was okay. as bad as what it was. He's like, Angie, I just got stabbed. I just want to let you know they're taking me by ambulance because it's protocol, but I'm okay. But I'm like, okay, there was a fight, but he's in fights at work a lot. I mean, that happens. So I was kind of just, I guess, a little oblivious as to mm -hmm. obviously how bad it was because he was calling me. And then he called me again from the ambulance. Hey, you might not be able to get in because of COVID. And I'm like, we're on our way. We're on the strip. We'll be there in 10 minutes. You know, I'm coming to see ya. And then I walked in the trauma room and saw him and about hit the floor. Cause I, I didn't, at the, at the time, I didn't know really the extent, extent, mm -hmm. but I knew I was pretty messed up. Right. And, uh, you know, with her and my daughters and stuff, I don't want them being excited and then somebody else gets injured. Dale was in the process of constructing his twisted steel training facility when the attack occurred. Since then, it's now open and running. The main thing with this whole thing is for me to have this as my dream is for keep kids out of trouble, keep involved with sports, keep, and I love sports, it doesn't matter what sport it is. I mean, I'm wrestling more than a lot more, but um, you know, because I've been coaching wrestling now at the high school for 28 years. And I'm not saying I'm ending my career at the prison yet, but I mean, you know, to go back there, it's kind of going to be kind of nerve wracking and nervous and, you know, with one eye. But um, I mean, there's still, we'll see what goes on with that. But in the interim, while I'm off here, you know, this is occupying my time with the kids and, and uh, you know, it, it is. It's uh, a new thing to try to get up and running more, you know, and get more kids involved. And This is what he's always wanted to do, so, I mean, <laughs> I mean, you've wrestled since you've been, what, five? I mean, yeah. since you've been a tyke, so wow. Wow. this is pretty much all you know. The hardest thing for me is, is was, and it still is, is um, not being able to do a lot of things with my daughters. It's softball season time, coming here, and being on the mat with the kids and wrestling. I'm not cleared to do kind of any of that stuff. I mean, I still have blood you know, brain in my brain a little bit, and they just took stitches out of my eyelid last, just past Friday, I mean. So, you know, it's a, it's a long road. Despite how well Dale's doing since the attack on December 7th, things have not always been easy, and there's a long way to go yet. Mentally, sometimes, you know, it's, uh, you know, you, you uh, like, you think, well, what could have happened? Or what could have I done better? Or what could I have done better? Um, I'm thankful to have two feet on the ground right now, and uh, living with my wife and my daughters, and, and living life uh, to the fullest extent that I can with one eye. Um, but you still, there's always that, I'm, like I said, I'm one of those people that don't like to lose in nothing. And um, I, I don't, I didn't lose, but uh, you know, I have my life and my wife and my children and everything going on. But you know, you just, you feel that sometimes, you know, you're driving down, you know, like with her in her car and I'm driving down, I'm thinking, I can't even look to the, I can't see nothing, you know? And um, it'll get better and as days go on, my eye will overcome, this will overcome everything and take care of it. And, you know, and then you think of one of the more, more worst situations of other people that are blind of both eyes and stuff. So, um, I mean, there's a lot less people that are more unfortunate than some people. So I don't want a pity party, I, you know, and that kind of stuff. Not, I mean, he needs help right now. He can't be out shoveling the snow. Like sometimes I catch him out, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Pushing it. You know, it's just little things, but he, he will get past all of it.